So in this video, I'm going to be presenting 14 years of real estate data in Thailand to show important insights like price appreciation, supply demand, sales rate, and buyer trends. I don't think there's ever been a video like this for the Thai market. So by the end of this video, you'll be loaded with useful information to make informed purchase decisions. And if you're looking to buy or rent real estate in Thailand, you can contact us at jetgunther.com. We handle a variety of budgets and service the major Thai cities. Let's first start with how property prices in Thailand have appreciated over the years. So while Thailand does not publish final transaction data of properties like in some other countries, we can still track price trends through mortgage data compiled by the Bank of Thailand. And I think this data is reliable because banks need to accurately appraise the value of properties to know how much they can safely loan out. So the indexes that I want to focus on are home prices across the country and condo prices in the Bangkok metro area. And you'll see that from 2011 to 2024, the price of homes all around Thailand grew by 62% with a compound annual growth rate of 3.8%, while condos in Bangkok grew by 98.5% with a growth rate of 5.4% per year. Now, in comparison, the popular S&P 500 index fund, VOO, has a compound annual growth rate of 14% in the same period. So if you're mainly looking to grow capital, I'll be the first one to tell you not to invest in properties in Thailand. However, you can't sleep, eat, or f in your brokerage account, can you? Also, notice how resilient property prices were, despite Thailand's military coup and during COVID. And I think most people would prefer that their properties behave as a conservative capital preservation vehicle rather than a risk on asset. And the truth is that Thailand's real estate market never was a highly speculative playground. A 2024 survey showed that only 15% of Thai property buyers who were surveyed said they were buying as a pure investment. So that means that 85% of Thais bought property mainly for, wait for it, you'll never believe this, their utility purpose. I know that sounds so crazy, a market that buys homes to actually live in them rather than to speculate. But yes, I think the overall lack of a vibrant speculative market is what keeps prices lower than other markets. And this is why I believe Thailand offers excellent value for money, considering how you can buy into world-class quality of living at a fraction of what you would pay in other major cities. According to a crowdsourced cost of living site, the average price per square meter of an apartment in the city center in Bangkok is around $5,900 per square meter. That's around $550 per square foot, placing Bangkok 96 on the list of 330 cities surveyed. The other Thai city on the list is Pattaya at $2,800 per square meter, and that's just $260 per square foot. So on my channel, I've toured branded residences like the Ritz-Carlton, the Four Seasons, Mandarin Oriental, and Kempinski residences. And if you look at average prices of those brands in other major cities, you'll see that they're much higher than in Bangkok for a very similar living experience. So let's now turn to supply demand in the market. So according to CBRE from 2014 to Q2 this year, there were a total of 600,000 condo units added to the Bangkok metro area, which includes its five neighboring provinces. Around 86,000 of these are in downtown Bangkok itself, which is where most of my inquiries for Bangkok asked for. Of those 86,000 units, we have a cumulative sales rate of 92%, for, which leaves an outstanding supply of around 6,500 units. They didn't give the sales rate for the entire Bangkok metro area, but I expect it to be much lower than 92% for downtown. Now, when you hear this, you may be thinking that a supply of 6,500 condo units in downtown Bangkok is very high. But is it, though? How many of those units are the ones you actually want? For example, let me run down the most common criteria I get from people I work with. So most people want a condo that's walking distance to the SkyTrain, and out of the supply of 6,500 condos, how many are walking distance? So that narrows down the pool a lot. But not just any SkyTrain. People I talk to always want to live in places like Sa Thon, Silom, Prompong, Tong Lo. So that narrows it down even further. What about size? As you know, most condos in Bangkok are tiny little matchboxes, so filtering for ones over 100 square meters narrows it down even further. From there, people want a high floor, 
with a balcony facing east. Oh, and the big one is people want a decent sized kitchen. Most condos here have horrible kitchens. Not only that, how many condos meet all the criteria I just said and are available under the foreign quota? Because many of those are under the Thai quota. And how many condos meet all the criteria I just described are available under the foreign quota and are within the budget that you are asking for? So as you can see, once you list out the criteria that you want, and many of which are non-negotiable, you've drastically reduced the pool of available units in the city, or to what I call the realistic supply. Anyway, CBRE also published data for Phuket, where as of the first half of this year, the total cumulative supply of condos in Phuket comes to just under 20,000, with a sales rate of 65%, while the cumulative supply of villas in Phuket is just under 5,000, with a sales rate of 74%. Okay, let's talk about demand. I'm not gonna lie, the first six months of this year was freaking rough. I personally saw zero sales, only rentals, and I think people were hesitant to buy because the global trade wars, which was compounded by the big earthquake in Myanmar, which was compounded again by rumors that the military was gonna take over Thailand yet again. And while none of these things turned out to be nearly as bad as we thought, people still decided to take a wait and see approach. And according to the Real Estate Info Center, sales across the country in Q1 this year was down 10.5% from the same period last year. In Bangkok, the number was down around 9%, and in Chonburi, where Pattaya is, it was down 6%. So we then saw developers caving in on prices and offering great discounts. And early data showed that condo sales in Q2 across the country went up 7% compared to the previous quarter. And for me personally, the past couple of months suddenly had the best sales momentum ever. We just closed deals back to back to back. So yeah, whew, no need for me to start a new OnlyFans career or reach out to any sugar mamas anymore. So my insight for you here is we are in an amazing buyer's market. The industry was really struggling this year. Sellers were forced to drop their prices, and a lot of buyers got the prices that they wanted. So if you see a property you like that is a bit out of your budget, I say just make an offer. I think it's more likely now that you will get the price you want than ever before. And you can reach out to us at jetgunther.com, tell us your budget and requirements, and we'll let you know the properties that you can feasibly lowball. Let's now move on to the secondary property market as many people are wondering about the resale prospects in Thailand. So in Q1 of 2025, secondary properties accounted for 65% of all properties sold across the country. When you zoom into just the condo market, secondhand condos accounted for around 50% of all condos sold in Thailand. I do wanna emphasize though that the success of your individual case depends on the choices you made. I think it's Warren Buffett who said that profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. Back to my previous example about the supply of condos. Again, most people want condos that's walking distance to the BTS, that's in Saton, Silom Prompong, or Tongwa, that's a good layout on a high floor with an east-facing view with a nice balcony and a decent-sized kitchen, etc., etc. So imagine if you own a unit that ticks all the boxes that most people want. What do you think your prospects are gonna be when you wanna eventually sell? Too often, I see people complain about not being able to sell their condos when even they don't wanna live in it. You see what I mean? Let's now look at trends specific to condo buyers in Thailand. So in Q1 this year, foreigners bought around 3,900 condos, which is around 6% of all property sales in Thailand. Surprisingly, this is one of the best performing quarters in terms of foreign sales in seven years. Why I find this surprising is last year, if you remember, a lot of foreigners were worried about Thailand's new interpretation of its tax laws. And I was making videos and interviewing lawyers to tell the expat community that these laws, in reality, will not affect the majority of foreigners. But judging by the comments I received in those videos, I had thought people were just too panicked to listen to what we had to say. But it turns out people must have done their own research and then came to the same conclusion that most of them will not be affected by the tax rules, which is why sales were not affected at all. 
Now, the total value of condos sold to foreigners amounted to around 16.4 billion baht, which is around 9% of all property sale value in Thailand. Specifically, Chinese buyers accounted for 37% of all foreign purchase value, which is around 3.3% of the entire market value. So to those who like to say that, oh, the Chinese are dominating Thailand's real estate market, yeah, I don't think I'd be dominating anyone if I were only 3.3% their size. Foreigners also prefer secondhand condos just as much as Thai buyers do, where the percentage of secondhand condos sit at 47% of all condos sold to foreigners. For Thais, it's around 50%. If you look at provinces ranked by the amount of foreign money going in, Bangkok accounts for 58% of foreign purchase value, followed by Chonburi at 23%, then Phuket at 8.4%, Samut Prakan 2.5%, and then Chiang Mai at 2.4%, and all other provinces amount to just over 5%. So there you have it. If you like this kind of factual and data-driven video, I recommend checking out this video that just popped up where I talk about how foreigners can legally buy property in Thailand.